I don't know, but perhaps I can stop the land. Now, saying that, I'm fairly safe. Down in the... Do you imagine? Down in the light. Yeah. 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 Down in the open roundabout used to be at the end of the farm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's nobody else in there. Uh, uh, so the fireman's uh, face is really good. Yeah, they wouldn't come in the fire. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we may as well start there, I think uh, if anyone else comes along for the round, everyone are yeah. more welcome to join us. But sure, yeah, do you just want to move in a wee bit, just so, so we don't have to shout, it's not too, it's not too noisy here anyway. But. Um, just uh, thanks everyone for coming out here this evening. Uh, my name's Cormac, I'm from Rockford Park myself, and it's great to see people coming together like this, just from the locality to get organised. Um, won't keep us here too long, just two main things to talk about and the first thing is the meter installations and trying to try not oppose the installation of, the, of them and the second thing then is the campaign of non-payments which is the key part of this whole campaign and defeating the water charges um, so, and if there's one message that I, I think everybody should come away from this meeting here tonight is that everyone within us has the power to contribute to this campaign, this isn't about any political part, this political parties or anything like that. So, uh, uh, we don't need our political masters to do things for us. Every one of us in the community here has the power to, to affect the change themselves. And if we stand stand up for ourselves, stand for our neighbours, stand for our communities, street by street, group by group, community by community, coming together, be it Rory O'Connor, Vincent's Park, Rockford, if we all pull together, we will win this. Um, so firstly then, just about the meter installation, we've had a number of successes already in the area. Firstly in Fintons Park, where we stopped them a few weeks ago. Uh, then on in Casement Villas, we stopped them again. And then other places around the area, in Ballybreck, there's been great success over there. Uh, today, even just down in Highthorn um, and Meadowlands in Monkstown Farm there. So there's been great successes around the area, both in Deans Grange and further afield. So that's brilliant to see people pulling together. Um, and there's a couple of people I suppose then will will offer and anyone else who wants to offer their thoughts on how our, how we best approach this. It's, it's it's not for anyone here to hold the hold the fort. Everyone here can contribute. Feel free to make your contributions. And um, so I suppose first up we'll talk about the meter installations. Um, the way we've all, the way we've worked it is when they've come into an area, if they get into the area, if they come unannounced and get into the area. <coughs> We put a call out for help and any activists nearby in the area come and try and stop work in Fintons Park when they started working. Within half an hour we had them shut down so if they arrive, if they do arrive in Rory O'Connor um, unannounced and get to start working, it's very important that uh, people in the estate act as the eyes and ears and get in contact uh, with, there's telephone numbers. Uh, a couple of telephone numbers were on the leaflets that went around on Sunday there. There's more copies of that leaflet here with me. Um, and also Phil here operates a phone, it's, it's a roving telephone around the borough. Um, you could ring her number as well and she'd get people here, she'd put the alarm out and we get people here as quickly as possible, shut work down. Um, and then the next day if they try and return we actually man a blockade. So what we did in Fintons Park when they turned up, we let them drive the truck into the estate and then we blockaded all their heavy equipment for the day so they weren't able to install a single meter in St. Vincent's Park that day and it also meant that by blockading them into the area they weren't able to just go off somewhere else um, and do their work elsewhere because it's not just about our one street or our one network of streets it's about standing together with other communities and standing side by side in this um, so does anybody else feel? Do you want to talk about <laughs> anything else on the water meter, or anyone else want to talk about Can water I meter ask installations? You at this point now, you, yeah. if you make the calls and nobody shows up at the moment, but you happen to be there yourself, should you stand back, refrain, or should you actually say something to the builders, to the in installers, whatever? Yeah, yeah in, in Ballybrack the other day, one girl managed to stop them. She held them for about half an hour before anyone else showed up. 
So all she did was she positioned herself behind the digger. Okay. But without the heavy digger, they were that, that slowed them right down. They weren't able to do anything. Right. Um, so one yeah. person can be very effective. Two yeah. people can be even more effective. One stand the front, one stand one at the back of their uh, their machinery. Then after that, as people arrive, it, it, it just then the the, the, the resistance grows okay. and it becomes okay. easier and easier and easier. Yeah. The best thing to do is to ask them for their safety pass and the license that they have to dig up your path. Okay. And they can't produce them. They'll tell you they're on file. It's not true because the council haven't given them permission to dig up paths. But they will just railroad you. They'll keep working around you. So what you do is just stand your ground. Don't be intimidated by them. I got threatened last week, I'll put my shovel through your window and I said, you do and I'll take it off and shove it up your arse. Because he thought because I was on my own, I was a woman, I'd yeah. back away and I'd just go, Ooh, you yeah. know. Yeah. That's it, you have to stand up to them. Even the kids are standing up to them. There's a lot of children, wasn't it, up in... In Ballybrack. Yeah. In Ballybrack, yeah. and they done a fantastic job. The yeah. nerve of the kids, and they were shouting at them, no water meters, no way, we won't pay. Yeah. And it just stopped them, dead in their tracks. And it's a matter of, we can't speak for you, because when we come down to help you, to stand up to them, they'll tell us we're not speaking to you, we'll speak to the rest. And well, there you go, because the rest yeah. didn't ask me to stand with them. Right. It's only the resident has the right to ask for the pass and the license and stuff. Okay. So that's where your ground is. If they can't produce that, you say, you're not touching that. Okay. I don't want a meeting and not digging. And the way we have our cars parked over the yellow, the yellow spray there. Yeah. They can't force us to move our vehicles or anything like that. Well, they can if it's on the path. Because theirs is on the path. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the if there's space for a wheelchair, yeah. there's space for a wheelchair. The guards can come and ask you to move it, but they can't. They can't. No. Right. But the guard, they can call the guards like they usually do. And get the guards in to do their dirty work for them. But the thing about it is, we have the leaflets there that says, there, No water meter. So just put it over your shawl and duct tape it to the shawl. Our meters are already in No, they have to change them. Yeah. When did you get them? Yeah, six weeks, yeah. yeah. yeah well, some of them are in already, yeah. The only receiver yeah. boxes. Yeah, the yeah. There's a clock in them. Yeah. No, is there a clock in them? Yeah. Well, that can be taken out. That'll be taken out. Mm -hmm. There's a good few nearly, I'd say, half the stuff. Depending on if you yeah. want it in there or not. The yellow spray there. Yeah. They can't force us to move our vehicles around. They just come out of nowhere and get a message. And <laughs> lo and behold, there was one in the bottom of the noggin hill the other morning. Sitting <laughs> on the roundabout. <laughs> Big water meter. <laughs> so yes, they can be removed. It's just a matter of trying, why we're trying to stop them getting the receiver boxes in because they can develop a company. The more yeah. customers they say they have, the more boxes that's in. That's why we're using the resistance to stop them putting the, the box in, yeah. right? Some of them have meter, some of them don't. But if they get enough, uh, as they say, if they go back to wherever they're looking for money and say they have so many meters in, wherever there's a fresh you know, pack here, there's a meter. Well, That's we right know job. that, yeah. but but a lot of them now have to be dug up because they don't fit the meter. Once yeah. they put in before, yeah. they have to come back and redig them because yeah. they don't fit yeah. the yeah. new yeah. meter. Yeah. 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 So that's all it takes is for you to come out and stand in front of them and then for you to knock for a neighbour or something. Bring your neighbour out, get the kids out. Put the buggy at the gate. Do you know what I mean? Just anything you can do, bring a chair out, sit in the chair. Have a picnic. Put a table out or a little step ladder over the shore. Or you can take the lid off and have a look. Like I could take your... I could, we could take the lid off your shore and pour bleach into it and 20 seconds later it'll come out in your tap. That's how dangerous they are. Anybody can open them. You know what I mean? It's a health and safety risk as well. That you get young fellas messing or whatever and they go along and have it in the shore. You know what I mean? Just for divilment. 20 seconds later it comes out in your tap. Really? There's a good, um, good question that's been raised here as well about where when they come along and if you say to them, oh, I don't want a meter, and they'll often sort of say, oh, okay, if you don't want a meter, that's grand, we won't put one in. And so then they go and put one in, you know. They, yeah. they don't take them at their word at all. You, you, un unless you're physically standing on top of your stock cock, there's no guarantee that you won't get a meter. If, even if they promise you, they say mass, if they think they'll get a meter yeah. in, they, they tell you anything. So 
even if you tell them that you don't want to meet her, don't take don't take their word because we've like seen another area the they day. tell you X, Y, and yeah. Z, and then a meter goes in and it's, and it's and it's done. Then so your best bet is just for physically to stand on it, stand yeah. on your step. My little thing is in the driveway. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll still go they'll in. They'll still come in. They don't care. They won't pay any heed to whether. They it's don't care. They don't. Be, there's no rules for yeah. trespass for them. They yeah, don't care. husband's car is over the shore. They in the drive, but then they can't touch it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they don't, can't get your car moved. Yeah. Once Even the guards can't ask you to move your car out of your driveway. Yeah, no. Can I as well, just, um, I got some numbers the other day on Sunday, we did a door knocking, but communication is so important in this, so there's a, a sheet here, if I could ask you to put your name and mobile numbers, and so that then if they are in the area, if, if, if we get word, can set up a group, a group text, and just fire out a group text to say they're in the area and help you can all, red alert you can all come yeah. running. Um, Eddie's going to do the night shift. <laughs> so if you could send that around, if, you, if, if any of you could just put your, your name and your mobile number down, that'd be great. And it's from about 7 in the morning they start, okay, yeah. but sometimes they don't, won't come in till about 10 when they watch people going out. So get your, if your partner's in the house, get them to keep an eye on the window, it's important. Yeah. Like there was people here today that were at work, their wives were in the house, but they were kind of intimidated to come out or didn't want any bother. And we spoke to one woman, she says, I don't want to pay, but I don't want any trouble. She was an old woman and they are intimidated by them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's just a matter of making the phone call. You make the phone call from at least nine in the morning, I'm free. If I'm not free, there's someone else free, we'll come down and stand with you for a while. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then we make a call, and then as many people as possible come. And you know, it's funny as well. Yeah, yeah. You, you might find yourself thinking, you know, God, I can't see myself standing in front of a digger. That's not. I mean, this isn't something that necessarily comes naturally to me. I, I, I don't usually stand up in front of groups and start talking or talking to them or that. So this isn't something that comes naturally to me. Or a few weeks ago, when I was standing in front of a digger, that's not something I necessarily plan doing every afternoon, you know, but it's amazing how quickly you, you find it within yourself. So even if you are feeling a bit shy, you should have seen Phil a couple of weeks ago. She was, <laughs> I promise you, she was the most shy and retiring woman I've ever met. It's but a matter of just, just you know, if, if you do feel, if you don't, if you feel like, God, I can't really see myself doing that, you'd, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised that it becomes... Uh, At the end of the day, you still get them in. No, you haven't gotten them in in Meadowland, Willow Vale, Ashlawn, um, Caseman Crescent, Finton's Park, um, where else? There was somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, Watson. Uh, Ballyogan, none in Watson. Yeah. One, I stood outside yeah. one woman's house in Watson didn't want them and I stood there all day nearly. Okay. Uh, because she had to go to work, she was helping other people. We will, we will stand with you. If you can't physically do it, we will stand. Do you know what I mean? But we need try and make it out to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's okay. And even if they do, you know, they may get them in eventually. But if we don't, like, we might fight, and they might get them in. But if we don't fight, they've already got them in. You know, yeah. so we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna try our damnedest. Why don't and you just take them out for? There, there is that possibility as well. But to, to be honest with you, so they can't put them. We haven't got a digger. Even the thing with the water meter fairies and all that, I'd rather it not come to that because these cowboys, you really don't want them going anywhere near your water supply because we were at one place, I can't remember where it was, and they only got one hole dug that day and they they, bleed, they they burst that pipe. They dug one hole that day and they burst the pipe. So, I mean, I, 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 I really, uh, to be, you know, the, the meter fairies or whatever, you, you want that to be coming after you've put up the struggle because I, I honestly don't want them going anywhere near my, my water supply, you know. And now that, now that you're being told by Irish Water, if there is a leak, you have to fix it and you have to pay to replace the pipes that they're breaking. They're cutting your pipes and taking away the lead or whatever's in them and they're using them for scrap, they're getting money on them. And then when they come back to you, they're putting in a piece of, isn't it blue, like plastic, plastic piping. And then if anything happens to it, you're told, no, that's your job, you have to replace it. And your 100 euro, you won't be getting it because it's four <laughs> vouchers for 25 euro. And that's only after you've paid the bill. It's to help you with the next one. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I can I'm just add to that if you don't mind. I'm Greg, I live down in Dunleary actually, just been helping to try and 
organise the campaign or do my little bit. I think like the key thing around the meters is, I mean, in, in terms of your question about will they get them in eventually, well maybe they will get them in eventually, but by people actually sort of standing up and showing publicly opposition to it, what that does, if nothing else, it emboldens people when it comes to the whole thing around paying the bill. Because everyone's sitting there now deciding what will I do when the bill comes in April, will I pay it or won't I pay it? And what we need to do is get the impression out there, because the vast majority of people aren't going to pay it. If everybody knows, everybody else isn't going to pay it. So if each one of us sees our job as being to try and convince another 15 or 20 or whatever number of people we can that when the bill comes in April they shouldn't pay it. And that we're not waiting for politicians or trade union leaders or anybody else to do it for us, but we're actually just making that decision for ourselves and then saying, well, what I can do in terms of contributing to it is I can either, if I'm in, in, in my own area or close by, stand out and help prevent the meters, which, which as well as trying to stop the meters, just gives the, the, the public message. Stick a poster in your window saying, I don't want that, no water charges. It, again, it heightens the profile of it. And chat to your neighbours and your friends and your family and everybody. Just become a pain in the hole talking about water charges, basically. Because between now and the beginning of April, everyone's going to decide whether to pay the bill or not. And from, from April until July of next year, it's well worth everybody's while taking a risk on it because the only financial penalty that can be is a hundred. You won't get the hundred euros that they promised you as a bribe in September, and there's an extra thirty euros put on the bill in July. So between now and July of next year, the only thing anybody's risking is that they might end up having to pay another hundred and thirty euros if we lose. But what they're risking if we pay is the risk and bills of five, six or seven hundred euros in a couple of years' time. And putting it that way to people and say, look, even if you're not sure what to do, why not hold on to the money and take a risk on it until July of next year and see where we're at at that stage. And at that stage we can all assess as to whether we're winning. And if we, if we lose, we lose. But at least we, we will have put up a bit of a fight. And I actually do think that because communities are coming together, then the difference between this campaign and previous campaigns is that in any other campaign I've ever been involved in, and I've been involved in many over the last 20 years, we haven't been able to pull people together to meetings like this. If anyone had said to me a few months ago, we'll have a meeting and in a state on a cold January evening and sort of we'll get... February. You know, February, it's actually February, yes. <laughs> it feels like, <laughs> feel like January. A cold February evening and, and that this number of people, of residents will come out. I'd be saying they were mad. But, so this is actually bringing people together. And the other thing is, too, is it's, it's, people are starting to talk to neighbours about stuff again that they've never done maybe for years, you know, and building that sense of community again and, and, and looking out for each other. So one thing we were chatting about the other day while we were, we were walking around dropping the leaflets was that to say maybe tonight, if there's a couple of people even from here, because obviously it's all about, I see Patrick is here from Rose Park, but if we could even get a couple of, of volunteers from here, from tonight's meeting, that over the next couple of days we could go around, say, Rose Park and do the same, or the next estate. A couple of people that would go out and start helping to organise the next estate. And in that way, basically, it snowballs in terms of helping. So if there is anyone that, and again, look, None of us, it comes easy to us knocking on people's doors and talking to them about stuff. But once you do it a couple of times, you do get used to doing it, you know. So if there's anyone feels that they'd be able to give a hand with doing that stuff over the next couple of weeks, you know, with going into the next couple of estates and helping to knock on people's doors and talk to people, just let, let us, uh, Cormac or Phil or myself, know before the end of the meeting and, and we'll, we'll, we'll organise something over the next few days. But the key thing is looking out for each other, supporting each other and building it that way that, that we own the campaign ourselves, you know. Very good. <laughs> if we have, uh, does anyone want, if anyone